I, I did I did discover that I was a jazz singer. And you know, when I after I moved to New York, I knew that's what I was after. But I was in two camps for a while because the free thing was happening, and I had my standard thing. And I moved to a loft down before Soho. The Soho. We had lived in a loft, and we would give concerts. How about Prince Street, one of those. Uh... Miss Bernard Street, right below Canal Street. Okay. And it was one of the first living, you know, a few people lived down there. And we used to give concerts. And sometimes it would be completely free. Bob Moses, Gene Lee, uh, Sam Rivers, Joanne Bracke, uh, Junie Booth. I'm just trying to think of people who played. Bob Berg, uh, Pete Yellen. These are all people that we would have special guests. We charge a dollar twenty-five. But depended upon the artist, was it straight ahead or was it free? Mm -hmm. And it seemed like for a while it was totally this or this. And I always tell the story that sometimes if I was in one of those free situations, halfway through I would go, oh God, please let me just sing that never entered my mind. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. And if I was in the middle of a standard one, I would mm -hmm. like, ooh, okay. and I wanted to go up. Mm -hmm. So it took many years to figure it out, and I think and everybody has their own. That's your business. How how much of any of it that you that goes into your thing? But I think it was the '70s when the Latin came in and the vamps, a lot of vamps and sextets, and I started to improvise over vamps, and of course the blues, and then slowly I would. Uh, I don't know. That's somebody else's. I mean, if you if you go. I, I didn't really have my own, I, I recorded with a group called Unity, which you probably don't have yet, but that was my first re early recordings. Mine didn't come till 1980. Mm -hmm. And finally, when my mine first, under my first name, as I think back, you go, why are you going to record? I do everything, you know, I did all, you know. So I always record what I'm doing now, that's my deal. Oh, right, yeah, that's fine. You know, you know, you pick, you make yeah. it up later. But it, it's all out. Do you have that, Jay Clayton, all out? It was just, it, it, it's a record, but it was just released on CD only in Japan, and if I have one, I'd be happy to give it to you. Jane Ira Bloom is on who I still, who I still collaborate with, and um, my ex-husband, Frank Clayton, Harvey Swartz, and Larry Carish. But that had a lot of original and very very few words. Only words were Lonely Woman, or Nicole. So, and when I think about it, you know, I didn't, that's just the way it worked out. But anyway, so all of, I guess my point is for me personally is that I, I got so interested in the music, and then I followed it, and then I'm a, but I'm a voice, I'm a singer, but I, since I was in the free thing, I was already articulate. I mean, I, I don't know what I was doing, but I was already discriminating, and I used to say there was a lot of garbage you have to go through because you don't know, you just make it, you know, it's just all new. I don't know what I was doing. I was just feeling. You just feel. It was very emotional, actually. And I still, to this day, believe that that's the most. Um, you hear free music, and to me, it still should be fueled somehow from, from an emotion. But it's very intuitive, so it's hard to describe. So as an improviser, you have to ha be a performer. You have to be a composer. You have to, you know, it's like that's all. All of a sudden, it's what we call it spontaneous composition. Right. You have to be everything. And there's not a whole lot of people that kept doing that, but the but the ones that did, I mean, we could just get up and do it. There aren't that many people I would do that with, right. but there are some I would. And um, and and just recently, I did get the Chamber of Music America grant this year. Yes, I did. It's a miracle. <laughs> well, no, I don't yeah. know. I, and I'm v writing very little, but it was I proposed to write it for Jerry Grinelli, the drummer that's on most of those. Excellent. He's he's like. Well, he's been doing this like me. I, we were in, he was in the West Coast and we met years ago, but we had he was already in his, uh, from San Francisco, right, Jerry? He's yeah, he, yeah, that's where he, and, and he's, he's now in he's, Halifax. Yeah, he's you know alive then. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we've been partnered. We have a duo. I sent you the duo. Yeah. Right? Uh, in text, I've been using poetry a lot lately. Like, yeah. I think you do too. <laughs> no, I mean in the last few years, it's like he comes are just come popping out. That's I great. don't. I rarely, rarely write it. I, okay. But I memorize poetry. Oh, you memorize poetry. Yeah. You're yeah. not instantly poet, doing poetry. Only that Probably. sometimes, which is yeah. my solo piece, sometimes mm -hmm. was instant. That and that was a, a years ago, and I would be very shy to do that. But I would be improvising freely. But like we're singers, we have. We we. And and I was like, and so this came. I actually Gary Peacock was on that one gig. I remember it to this day. 
And I just started saying some, and then I later made a little solo piece out of it. Sometimes I wonder, you know, it came up. So probably I could do it more, but I, there's so much beautiful poetry that I keep seeking and yeah. memorizing that it doesn't, it'll just pop out in, in certain situations. Anyway, this grant is for that, and I and, and it's I'm I'm calling it uh, lines and spaces for whatever my proposal was because it's going to be <laughs> and it's going to be a, a, a dream suite. I'm using um, dream poems. I'm using uh, Hughes, uh, Langston Hughes. Uh, what happens to a dream deferred? Or and uh, and uh, uh, hold fast to dreams. Where if dreams die, life is but a broken winged bird that cannot fly. I use both. I believe in I believe if somebody truly is loves jazz and wants to do vocal jazz that, that both are very important. The standards, bebop, uh, in other words, Ornette swings, it's a bebop, it's free bop, but yeah. it's but it's like if you want to I I'm I'm my most I'm fueled by jazz as opposed to there's a lot of improvisation new music in prop but you can yeah, hear it and this doesn't necessarily no, ever swing and, and that's okay I believe that you have to go if you it's any discipline is like that you know, I feel and yet I'm like I'm I'm kind of um, at the same time I don't like rules so much you know it's not that this and that, you know what I mean I'm, but, but I still feel that if you want to swing and you don't swing and you haven't, you'll listen to music, that's how you learn to swing. You can't teach it, I don't notate it. But for like a lot of young singers, they if they learn the bebop heads, it's built in. That's true. So yeah. I teach, you know, that's what I do. I've got it, you know, and vamps are easy to improvise over, you know. But you learn by doing, and so I got to do. Right. Now, I mean, it's not as easy you're not going to go to a free session necessarily. So no. I do, I, you know, I just was invited to teach a Peabody a Institute in Baltimore. I, I, I went down there two semesters now, every couple, two, three weeks. Oh, cool. And I taught a free ensemble cool. and a standards ensemble. Mostly instruments because yeah. they don't have any vocal jazz majors there. They want to have them there. They want both. Yeah. yeah. So you saw, you know what I did with you. you know, yeah, that was cool. I just find things. Just but there's I not that many that do both. There's not that many people not teaching, really. and there's not that many not people really. singing, definitely. I know. I know, I know. But for me, where I choose, same with instruments, I can tell. And you go smoothly from one to the other with it. So you know, it's, it's just your thing. I just love yeah, it. It's great. Yeah. A lot of people reject one or the other, right? Or, or don't go in one. Well, yeah, and everybody okay. is, yeah. you know, everybody has yeah. a certain thing in their heart, you know, yeah. that they're going to learn so, more of. Yeah. But I just have always liked both. And yeah. I, so, so my sets are, there might be, uh, let's just say I had a concert next week, it would probably have a couple of standards and more original, because I'm writing all this stuff, but I, not all this stuff, but I, or, or original things, you know, but um, they'll be in there. They'll yeah. always be a beautiful ballad, which I think is so gorgeous. Right. I, and I have to choose one. I know. It's like, well, you, basically you sing what you want. You yeah. sing what you like, you yeah. sing what you want. And I have them, you know, I a keep lot of learning them too, learning standards. A lot of Go people ahead. get all sort of their knickers in a knot, maybe trying to do what they think other people want. No, no, no. It'll never, because <laughs> other people, and, and I'm, I'm saying this for the first time, but I think people don't know what, why they like certain things, but I really truly believe they like it because they believe it. Because they truly believe it. I really, even when they don't know, I think that people do want the truth. And any artist that they love, they, if you, you, you if you ask them why, they won't be able. We can tell them, because that person is really behind what they're doing. Yeah. You know. And so the young people that are like, well, but this and this and I should do this. I go, and you know, when I do a private, and we go through repertoire sometime, and I'll go, and go oh, show me what you're doing. And I go, do you love it? Do you like it? Or are you indifferent? And if if it's not love, I don't even want to work with them. No, that makes sense. It doesn't mean it won't be love in a few weeks. But if it ends, if I ask you and you go, oh, I'm not interested, because yeah. that's not going to be no, the song exactly. that you connect with. And that's the connection. Yeah. You know, so I, yeah. I never worried about it much. But <laughs> hey, I'm not so, you know. So what? You know, people used to tell me, you know, sing such and such for a while. I don't, I don't know. I don't know one situation of, it, of that. I don't know. Nobody can ever give me an example of right. somebody who said they're going to do this commercial stuff for a while and then do their thing. Because if you stop no. developing your thing, 
You can't just kiss yeah. suddenly start it. Right. 